<laughs> Thank you, Quan. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Listen, I've been having going through my surgeries and my and my dental issues. I was so swollen that this side of my face was like this. It was like I couldn't speak. I was like, uh, uh, and I wasn't not, I wasn't an exercise or nothing. I was like, and I still wasn't taking painkillers. I was doing my natural herb stuff. It was working, but I just I oh it was the retrograde, the retrograde. Look, I told you on my Instagram is bound to be a killer, and it has been. This grade is rough. It's tough. It ends on the 28th, but the residue of the red grade can go, go as far as the 16th of April. I'm still on the treatment and have a few more surgeries to go. Oh, baby. I have to take my Leo scepter to carry me for strength. Because I don't take painkillers. But I do my Barcelo Dominican rum shot imported directly from Santo Domingo. <laughs> do I got a choice? Bitch, and I could and I could eat. I got a lot of work to do. I started my school on astrology. I have three more seats available at $350 a pop for six weeks, twice a week. I send you a private link to a private video that I fashion just for my students of astrology. I've already started yesterday, and um, you can never fall behind because when you pay, you get everything done, you get the links to the videos, and, it, and you get a certificate, okay? This is an actual legit school of mine that I've been trying to fund for years, okay? And many of you have helped make that happen. So between that, Columbia, my place, because we're in theater season, and I'm beginning to continue the work that I began in Chelmsford with my brother Bruce. Holla to my brother Bruce. I haven't spoken to him and seen him in a minute. You know, my baby brother, because, you know, Bruce is 38. So, my all the money for the plays that I'm about to produce will be directed to Chelms Ford. You know, that was the original plan, remember? Okay. I didn't forget none about that. I just don't talk my stuff until I get it, until I have the stuff to do it. That's how you get things get done. Huh? Again, thank you for your incoming dollars on my GoFundMe page because you all know, uh, you know, that the money goes for these productions, which I, some of you already know, have been putting in progress, especially in Chelmsford, now for almost a year. And June will be here right around the corner, and you all know that I will be going to Shanghai and to Singapore and doing business there. So all that will be happening in June, a lot happening in June. So I might go over on this video a couple more minutes because I give you 30 minutes of announcements, but you all know that I do. Some of you skip my announcement and go right into the video. Rude. But I get it. I know it's business. Okay. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in. And we're going to talk about the moon in Cancer as it relates to the human female. And of course, Cancer represents cardinal water. And what do we say about cardinal water? Cardinal water versus mutable water versus fixed water. You know what they say, still waters run deep. And this is especially true when we're dealing with the moon in Scorpio which we are yet to uh, get to. And then, of course, we have the moon in mutable water, which is water that can both be cardinal or fixed. For example, the Bermuda Triangle, even though it's in the middle of the ocean, in the Atlantic, changing waters, changing tides, Changing um, sea life, but in but between Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico, which creates the triangle, something happens in that part of our ocean that we cannot explain, and it's been happening since the days of Columbus. This right there, the Bermuda Triangle, represents fixed water, Scorpio. In the midst of the open ocean, which is mutable water, this expresses the mutable uh, 
ability for mutable water to turn fixed and for it to also turn cardinal. At the ties of the moon, low, high, low, high, low ties of the moon, which again is a cardinal manifestation of active water. Because when the water reaches the shores on high tide, it brings goodies with it. And then when it leaves on low tides and goes back to the ocean, it takes stuff with it. So and it and it shapes the morphology of our beach lines and seashores. That doesn't happen by fixed water or mutable water. It's cardinal water. The Grand Canyon was formed by water eroding these canyons to the beauty that we see and admire today. Don't forget, at the last ice age, that is that's the water that carved what today is the Grand Canyon. So that is cardinal water, active water, which changes the morphology of our emotions and also the actual topography of our planet. Boulders don't move, which are, which, you know, weigh tons without the cardinality of water, which is expressed in the moon in Cancer. So understand that these metaphors that I'm using and these analogies represent the inner strength and toughness of the American, or any woman for that matter, that bears the moon in Cancer. Very different from the moon in Cancer in a man's chart. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in and talk about the specifics of the moon in Cancer. Understand that when we are talking about the moon in Cancer, we are talking about the feminine mystique. The feminine mystique. When I talk about the Cancer woman, understand that I'm discussing an archetype that symbolizes all women of the planet. But the lead has to be Cancer. Because Cancer represents the most feminine of the principle of the sexes of the human female. It's not Aries, it's not Capricorn, and it's certainly not Libra. These are masculine signs. Cancer, with the exception of Capricorn, which is a feminine sign, because, you know, Earth and water are feminine signs, and air and fire are masculine signs. So we are dealing with two feminine cardinal signs, Cancer and... Capricorn, and two masculine signs, which is Aries and Libra. However, the ruler of Capricorn is Saturn, and Saturn is a masculine planet. Ah, so we are then technically dealing by default with three masculine planets which hold the positions of cardinality, the four cardinal points, and one feminine, ultra-feminine sign, which is um, the cardinal sign of Cancer. So the moon in Cancer represents the highest of femininity in a man's chart and in a woman's chart, but it is most noticeable in a woman's chart. And a woman with the moon in Cancer is truly, truly a delight unlike anything any human male will ever experience, even surpassing that of Leo. And that's deep for me to say, but understand that the actual natal position of Leo Moon is in the 12th house. So the way the cancer woman is exposingly to us, the Leo woman is in behind closed doors. So they both share a lot in common. Remember, uh, you have Cancer and then you have Leo. So there's a lot of characteristics that bleed between the two. But the kinkiness and freeness of expression and sexually that we see in the Leo woman begins with the moon in Cancer in the Cancer woman. Okay. So, oh my God, I run, I run out of my, you know, but so, you know, you know I'm going to have to re-up in a little bit. Give me a break. You, know, you have to see my face. 
The weed, all that, it tastes terrible. But I, I can't, I can't let, I'm Aries. Remember, my Aries moon. I can't let things like this stop me. I got to keep on course. So, understand that with the moon in cancer, we are dealing, you know, let's break it down with the basics. We are dealing with sensual. Sensual, romantic. Fantasy. What fuels the woman, the cancer moon in a woman's chart, sexual appetite is her fantasy. Oh my God. This woman has these fantasies that bear no... Look, I need a shot. I don't even know how to describe it. The woman, that the, 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 the cancer moon woman's imagination when it comes to sex. I can't describe it. I can't describe it. It's, I'm, oh my God, I can't describe it. I don't know how to describe it. It's powerful. It's frighteningly powerful. She can make it real when it's not. You don't understand cardinal water. I'm sorry, but you know, listen, oh, Cancer, Leo, Scorpio, oh, Lord, give a man a coronary. <laughs> you know, this woman is, uh, you know, when a child eats ice cream and it falls all over him, he just slobbers over, he just loves that. That is the woman's appetite when it comes to sex. And even though I'm not allowed to talk about the sex science of the Zodiac because I'm not contracted to do that, um, with the, I'm allowed a little bit of a leeway when it comes to the Cancer Moon female and also the Cancer Moon in a male's chart. Um, it is, uh, because sex is a very important part of life with these people, you know, and it is their barometer, their thermostat, and feeling good about themselves, about their partner, and everything that they are involved in, sex is the motor. It is the jump start that allows things to move forward. It is movement. And this, ex again, is another expression of the cardinality of, of water. Water moves like a tsunami or road waves. If it almost feels like it has a consciousness. The sea is a monster that's alive and it's terrifying. Because it is a part of nature that's alive and active and is governed by the moon exclusively. Even the sun, which is the strongest force in our solar system, cannot control the waters of our own planet unless the moon takes precedence. And the moon is always in front of the sun, orbiting in a sedonic movement mathematically. The earth and the moon, both it is a dance of the cosmos, not of the cosmos, of our solar system, because we only see this phenomenology as we are dealing with cosmology, with the sedonic movement of the moon and the earth. That kind of movement we only see and witness in our solar system, not in any other solar system, with the exception of binary stars. And it's yet to be determined whether they move the same way that our planet does with our moon. So, so, too, there is a psychological, emotional dance with the cancer woman or the mooning cancer woman. It is a dance to get to know her and to get to kind of get a, glim a, a grip of how to handle her. You have to understand that her emotions are a form of dance, like the waves of the, of the, of the, of the, of the ocean. That the, like the rip ties or the, those fluffy waves that hit the banks. And it, and it was that white fluff, that white foam. That's all moon in Cancer. Why do you think the ocean is associated with the moon? The moon is white when it's a full moon. And the oceans, when they hit the banks, they throw a fluff. And it's white, like the, like, like the milk of the moon. Understand how these anthropological associations are made. They're not just astrological. They are also histologically and anthropologically determined. So, let me tell you something. When it comes to the emotions, 
She and her partner need to be emotionally connected for her to feel good. So what does that mean? For If you want to have sex with a moon and cancer woman, you need to make her feel good the minute you get out of bed. Honey, I love... You know, did, you, did you do something to your shoulders? They're so smooth. Touch them a little bit and gently kiss her as she's brushing her teeth. Give her a call in the middle of the day. I love those shoes you put on when you went to work. They just had me thinking. I just want to let you know that. Or show up and take her to lunch and give her a flower. You will have her wet and juiced up by the time she gets home. And by the time you get home. You have to know how to seduce these women and juice them up. Like the Capricorn woman it requires a lot of that as well. You know? Otherwise, they're going to feel sexualized like sex objects. For that, you must have bust a nut doing this. You know? And no woman wants to feel that way. So, especially the Cancer Moon woman or the Capricorn Moon woman. Really, any woman. But it really affects these women when they are objectified in this way. So, if you're that type of dude that's a bad boy, and every woman in a few gents love a bad boy. But you have to be smart when you play the bad boy. When you're dealing with these very sensitive women. Or these very sensitive moon positions in a woman's chart. Regardless of the sign that they are. Okay? So... One of the things that's important with the moon in Cancer, since well, cause we have to talk about the sexual part and the opposite sex when it comes to a woman, is that she likes to let the man lead and she is flexible enough for any position that he may like. Even one that she don't like, she'll do it to please him. And if it pleases him, it, it can stimulate her to orgasm. She might not like what's happening sexually, but if she knows and feels that it's pleasing him, that's enough to make her like it. And she can orgasm and squirt all day, all night long if she knows that that's what he likes. The cancer woman was built to please, but she was also built to be pleased. And now, and many men fail to measure unless they don't know what they're doing, unless they know what they're doing. Because with, with any woman, you have to know what you're doing. And that requires giving a shit more than just busting a nut to get to know sexually a woman's body in a way where she doesn't feel objectified and, and, and it can be a symphony. But a lot depends on the male and the evolutionary state of that male that that woman chooses. And some men may not be good and, and some women may choose it because it's a bad boy and it serves a purpose. And when it comes to sex, women are the boss. They know what men they want and how to use them up. You know, women think that we are the ones playing the cards when really we are the ones being played all along. So, so too, this is the case when we're dealing with the cancer woman or the moon in cancer female. Okay? She likes a man to lead. And, and, and if he doesn't lead, that's already a problem. She, like I said, she loves fantasies. And seduction games. Oh my God, that's another category. That's, that's another category. Seduction games. Not just fantasy games, but then we have seduction games. Oh my God. Marquise de Sade. Even though that belongs to Scorpio, the one that designed it had to be a woman with the moon in cancer. Kinky! I can't tell you. I can't tell you how kinky and how intense. You know? The cancer woman has so many dimensions, so many dimensions to her, it's sick. Okay? She doesn't mind learning new things and learning how to love a man and pleasing him, you know. Having sex with men is something that the morning cancer woman enjoys. When I tell you that these women enjoy men, these are the women that fantasize of having more than one man in bed at the same time. All kinds of men. White men, black men, Asian men, young men, old men. Um, this woman has a, 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 an insensatiable appetite for the human male. And she keeps it on a very tight lid. 
Oh, this did this wrong? Yeah, not only are my guys loving it, but it just it just takes the pain. It makes the pain go away. <laughs> when she touches a man, that the uh, telling me to jump right in. When a, when a when a, a cat, when a woman with a morning cancer touches a man, oh my goodness, she brings chills. Ooh, ooh. she brings chills down his spine. Oh. <laughs> it makes me. It makes me. It makes me. Okay, let me. Let me not even go there. <laughs> Ooh. She known. She's known for having her mood swings. That's just true. But in the meantime, she's naturally very calm. And the more calm and quiet and serene she is, the more beautiful, the more mystical she appears. Again, the moon in Cancer is the signature of the feminine mystique. The mystery of being a woman and all that embodies of being a woman is defined by Cancer and the moon in Cancer. Now, now, there's a lot to cover <laughs> with the moon in Cancer. You know, this is cardinal, and it's dignified cardinal. You know, um, let me tell you, the sexual powers and the sexual proclivities of the Cancer woman or the moon in Cancer woman runs very deep. There's nothing the Woman in cancer or the moon in cancer loves more than her home. Oh my god. Besides, you know, a man, she loves her home. Oh my god. It is the pharaoh, the sanctuary, the very foundation of, of what is foundation in itself. It is ruled by cancer. Cardinal water. There's still a lot to say about Miss Cancer and the moon's position in this very powerful yet subtle cardinal sign. It doesn't have to be a home, tangible home. It could be a business. It could be a foundation, it could be an idea and a philosophy that can spawn many other offshoots of itself in future uh, incarnations. It is a powerful, powerful um, bedrock that will establish future empires, future generations of whatever. It's not just sex. On another uh, bent, another passion of Miss Cancer is that she loves food. Especially food that reminds her of her childhood. She will be responsive to environments that she remembers from her childhood that brought the best of memories. You have to understand that the cancer woman can be very clannish. You know, the tri and the 12 tribes of Israel, right? The tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Zebulun, the tribe of Ezra, the, the, the tribe of Zacharias, you know, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Reuben, you know, all the 12 tribes of Israel, that the, the concept of the rights of the tribes, you need to read this book called Lord of the Flies. Uh, it was written by a Virgo, I forgot the name of the person, Lord of the Flies, but it yeah, applied to the same concept of the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, the emergence of tribes began in the age of cancer, because cancer rules the tribe, and it's quite clannish. The lunar deity of the Jewish religion, well, I just said it, is the moon. 
and this um 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 organized you know race has been you know depicted as being very clannish and, and, and that has nothing to do with being affiliated with, with the God of Jehovah and nothing to do with that it has a lot to do with the actual behavioral characteristics of the moon which happens to be very clannish and this is not only exclusive to the, the Jewish faith it's also some some synonymous with other cultures in which the moon is held at, at its champion. So I understand to understand that importance. Okay. Um, another thing is that the moon in cancer woman she adores being comfortable and she'll open herself to you if if if, if she knows that she feels good and safe. And when it comes to uh, having sex with you, she has to be comfortable. And whatever that may mean, because comfortability is defined differently by different women. You need to know what makes this woman comfortable in order for her to have sex with you. Okay? The partner needs to make her feel secure before he gets to see her naughty side. She likes oral sex also. So I hope you like to eat, you know. She loves oral sex. She loves to get oral sex done, and she loves to go down on men, too. You know, she loves oral sex. We call this in sexual psychology to be extremely onanistic. When you are very onanistic, you are someone that is very fixated on oral sex, both male and female. And this is the sign of the expertise of, you know, oral sex. Oh, yes. Both in the man and in the female. And I believe we have run out of time. I did well, I did three minutes of commercial, so I did 27 minutes. We're done, and we're gonna go for part two.